Solomon's Vegas Adventures. Hey everybody, Solomon here, you know, from Solomon's Vegas Adventures. If you watch the channel, I think you know me. Um, anyways, I am back from my field camp. Uh, I survived the three weeks, I survived my capstone geology degree project, and I am back. So, while I was at field camp, we had some pretty damn cool adventures. The next five episodes will be those adventures. And uh, we were in uh, Bishop, California area, US 395 corridor, Eastern Sierras. So yeah, some pretty cool ones. We're going to start with the first episode here at the abandoned tungsten mine where we went rock hounding. So let's do it. So the locality that we rock hounded at is called the Tungsten Blue Mine, and it's an abandoned mine located about 10 minutes west of Bishop, California. The Tungsten Blue Mine and all of the mines that produce tungsten in the area are in a locality known as the Tungsten Hills, aptly named, a series of low-lying hills just east of the crest of the Sierra Nevada Mountains, and this place has a lot of history. A lot of these mines were operational until the 1940s, and they extracted a lot of tungsten. Furthermore, it's just really pretty out here. I mean, look at that view of the Sierras. Wow. This is a little diagram I put together outlining the nature of the deposit type at the Tungsten Hills. So the type of deposit in the Tungsten Hills is called a SCARN deposit, specifically a copper, gold, silver, molybdenum tungsten type SCARN deposit. Now, what is a SCARN deposit? Well, it's basically just this hot, igneous body of magma. In this case, the Cretaceous-aged granite pluton associated with the Sierra Nevada batholith intruding limestone, dolostone, and marble in this calcilicate scarn deposit. So because of this, it causes contact metamorphism, which basically bakes all the minerals in the limestone, dolostone, and marble, alters them, hydrothermal fluids come in, and these metals become precipitated from this igneous body. And the evidence is in the mineralogy. So here are some minerals that are indicative of exactly what's going on here in the Tungsten Hills. We have pyrite, which is an iron sulfide, a metal-bearing mineral associated with hydrothermal alteration. We also have wollastonite, which is a mineral that perfectly showcases exactly what's going on here. Wollastonite is most commonly formed by the thermal metamorphism of limestone, which is exactly what's going on here. The hot granite igneous body thermally alters the limestone and creates wollastonite in a diffusion reaction which takes place in SCARN. The CaCO3 present in the limestone reacts with the SiO2 in the quartz to form wollastonite and carbon dioxide. The next mineral we have rhymes with dioxide but is actually called diopside, but it's basically formed in the same manner that wollastonite is in this deposit, it's just that it forms from dolomite rather than calcite. As you can see, the dolomite, CaMgCO32, plus the silica dioxide or quartz interacts to form diopside and carbon dioxide. So, chemistry's cool, kids. We also had chalcopyrite and bornite in this deposit, which are copper iron sulfides, which, again, are those metallic-bearing minerals that are indicative of hydrothermally altered deposits. There was also a lot of garnet present, specifically andradite, the calcium iron end member of garnet, which is just indicative even more of that SCARN deposition, hydrothermally altered contact metamorphism. And of course, the mine wouldn't even exist if there wasn't that highly coveted tungsten, which there still is lots of there, manifested in the mineral scheelite, a calcium tungstate. Now, scheelite can be commonly confused with garnet, especially andradite, the specific type of garnet located in this SCARN deposit. But there are a few key differences. Scheelite has cleavage, garnet does not. Scheelite has a tetragonal crystal system and is eight-sided, whereas garnet, specifically andradite, is dodecahedral, meaning it has 12 sides. So this is scheelite. That's she right. Gold, silver, and molybdenum are also associated with these types of scarn deposits in this locality. We just didn't find any. Um, and I guess now that I spoiled the entire video by showing you guys what we found before we even went on the adventure, uh, enough chit chat and let's go on that adventure. Woohoo! So as previously mentioned, the Tungsten Blue Mine is located about 10 minutes west of Bishop, California, in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada Mountains. So to get there from Las Vegas, it's four and a half hours away. But this is a great stop if you're going to Yosemite or if you're going to Reno via the more scenic US 395 alternative. So I'm just going to give you guys the directions from Bishop, California to make it a lot simpler. So from Bishop, take Highway 168 West, and then you're going to turn right onto Red Hill Road. Turn right onto Ed Powers Road and turn left onto Tungsten City Road. Drive Tungsten City Road for 2.6 miles. You can just park there and hike to the site. All right, guys, so we are out here in the Tungsten Hills just west of Bishop, California, and we're going to go rock hounding for some tungsten and some garnet. Got a big pit over here. 
some old equipment over here from when the mine was open and then tailing piles up there. So uh, let's go see what we can find. Now this site up here is technically called the Tungsten Blue Mine. And uh, the minerals that you can find up there, according to several of the blogs that I have uh, consulted as well as some USGS reports, indicate that you can find garnet, uh, shelite, which is a calcium tungstate mineral, and uh, a plethora of other minerals up there. So uh, let's do it. And one thing to note everybody is that this is BLM land, so you can keep whatever you collect. And the views of the Sierras are just impeccable from up here. Look at that. Wow. All right, so with us today, we have Jose right there. We got Anthony, we got Madison, and we got James. And we are all geologists. Anthony and James are getting their PhD and masters in geology from UNLV. Jose, Madison, and I just graduated with our bachelor's in geology from UNLV. So we're a nice rock hounding crew. Let's go. Fuck yeah. <laughs> if you look here, there's veins of this uh, quartz and calcite. It's a scarn deposit. A calc silicate scarn deposit is what it's called. And then the green here that you see is epidote. So that's epidope. So here's a little hack right here. This is a bottle of hydrochloric acid and we're going to test if this white is quartz or calcite. If it's calcite, it'll fizz. If it's quartz, it won't. That is definitely calcite. See that fizzing? This is a calcite scarn deposit. This rock right here kind of shows you a lot of that garnet. You can see right there. And then that epidote, that's the green. And then calcite is the white. So, oh, look at these crystals right here. As you guys can see right here, these acicular bladed light crystals, diopside. These are some really nice crystals of diopside. Look at that. Look at all of this. That's crazy. Here's more of that diopside, guys. And these are just nice acicular crystals of that. Diopside's a pyroxene mineral. Look at all that. That's wild. Just filled with uh, iron oxides right here, as you guys can see. It's crazy. Here are some nice uh, minerals here. You guys see that rainbow luster? It's uh, They call that iridescent, right? Yeah, that is iridescent, too. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So this right here is a perfect example of hydrothermal sulfur mineralization. This red here, this is all iron oxide. This yellow, that's just straight up sulfur. And if you look right here at these iridescent, you know, rainbow-like lustered minerals, this is all chalcopyrite and bornite, which are iron sulfide minerals. So it just shows you that uh, sulfurization, I guess, for lack of a better term. This is super cool, guys. Look at this iridescence of that chalcopyrite and bornite. And look at that, that's gorgeous. So we were just on the side of the mine, on the uh, left side, the west side, and uh, now we're going into the pit to uh, see what we can find. All right, guys, here we go. Here's some iron-rich hydrothermal alteration. See this right here? It's a vein of pyrite, gorgeous. And then if we you know, come down here, there's more of that pyrite, you see? It's fool's gold, you know, commonly mistaken as gold, but it's an iron sulfide. So look at it, all that pyrite. This, this is a really gorgeous vein. Wow, look at that, more of that pyrite right there, gorgeous. Yeah, it's a little added in here. Oh yeah, it goes back. Oh, there's, it goes up there. That's why. Oh, huh, pretty cool. What's, what's in there? Nothing much. Oh, there's something shiny over there. Let's see it. So in here, we got some really nice andradite garnet on the wall. We got some iron oxides. That's the black. Lots of iron here. And then that green is epidote. We're just looking up more of that iron oxide. And there's also some shelite here as well. Shelite, andradite, iron oxide, lots of iron. 
Epido, there's the Andrade right there to the left. And then we're just looking up here, and that pistachio green, of course, is the epidote. There's more of that mineralization, Jose, right there. Um, and just look in here at the wall. It goes up. Like, there's an open room. It's so cool. And uh, lots of garnet and shelite on the wall right there. Pretty dope. There's a little stope in here. Looks like. wonder how much more mineralization there is. Let's check it. Yeah. All that calcite and that iron. And, uh... Wow, look at this, guys. Look at how sparkly that all is. Calcite, epidote with the green, and then the shielite. God, look at this wall. That's just, that's gorgeous. Oh, I think those are all garnets. Look at that. Wow, they've got that shielite too. That epidote, this is wild. This wall is amazing. Those smaller crystals are all shelite, and the bigger ones are andradite garnet. Wow. Look at this. This is amazing. These are all shelites and andradite garnets. Look at that. That's crazy. The green is epidote as well. And wow. That's ugh, all I can say is damn. That green right there that you see shining is that diopside right in that calcite. This window of it. It's crazy. This is a scar deposit, guys. Contact metamorphism. Just precipitates these nice minerals. All right, heading back out. This specimen right here, we've got some nice, I think that's azurite. It's pretty blue, blue enough. Again, just that juxtaposition of the Sierras right there. Chrysocolla. So this is Chrysocolla right here. Yep, this blue stuff. And Anthony just explained it to us that if you lick your finger and put it on the rock or the mineral and it sticks, it's chrysocolla because chrysocolla wants to be hydrated due to its chemical form. So, nice handy trick. We got a lot of abandoned mines out here in the Tungsten Hills. The one that we went to is technically called the Tungsten Blue Mine, but there's literally a plethora of them out here. Oh yeah, nice view too. So that was rock hounding the Tungsten Hills. We're about five hours from Vegas, on the way to Yosemite, out at the foot of the Sierra Nevadas, west of Bishop, California. So if you ever find yourself going out towards uh, Yosemite, this is a real nice place to stop on the way there, uh, especially if you like rock hounding and geology. So thanks for tuning in to another episode of Solomon's Vegas Adventures, guys. I really appreciate the support. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Solomon's Vegas Adventures. If you enjoy content like this, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and check out some of our other adventures right here. As always, guys, peace.